Call the July 22nd, 2014 Zoning Board of Appeals to order. Um, the first order of business is to approve the minutes of June 24th, 2014. Move to approve. Uh, anybody second the motion? I'll second. Uh, any discussion on the motion to approve the minutes of June 24th, 2014? Okay, all in favor? So that is six, nothing. <clears throat> all right, moving on to old business. Uh, the one item of old business we have today is uh, to hear the request of Mark Toothaker to have renewed proceedings regarding his variance application that was unanimously approved on December 11th, 2013. The subject property is Two Wheeler Road map U16 lot one. Actually, before we get to that, I just wanted to note, uh, at the last meeting, somebody had expressed some concern about the availability of the documents that have been submitted to the board relating to the hearing. Um, and we have a copy of the documents that the board has up here, and we will have a copy of that at every meeting. Um, and also, uh, they are, of course, available um, at town hall prior to the meetings. Um, just wanted to let everybody know that. Um, and with that, we will move on to the old business with uh, Mark Toothaker. Um, ben, can you give the board uh, some background regarding where this matter stands now? <clears throat> yeah, at the December meeting, Mr. Toothaker's variance was approved. Uh, the day after the variance was approved, his builder came into town hall and was very excited to start the project, wanted his permit uh, quickly, so I, I processed uh, the certificate of variance, uh, relayed all the information to his builder, and then for one reason or another, that information did not get to Mr. Toothaker, and he was not aware that, there, that he had 90 days to register his variance. And, and then, of course, the variance was not issued. Or the, it was not registered within 90 days. And, and the variance was not registered within 90 days. Therefore, it is expired. OK. Uh, Mr. Wait, Kubik, oh. Can I ask Ben a question? Yeah. Do you know off the top of your head what triggers the 90 days? Is it your processing or our vote? I, I don't know. Do you know what section that is? Sorry. It's page 52. Nineteen five three, e nineteen five four, page fifty two. It, it says within ninety days of final approval. But they have to record the certificate of variance. Right. And that final approval is the board. It's action, or I, I would assume the final approval would be the board's action, based on the context. It's it okay. doesn't say specifically. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Toothaker. Mark, do you take a two-wheeler road? Um, I appreciate you guys uh, letting me come back again. Um, extenuating circumstances stopped us from continuing with the project. Uh, as a letter that I hope you all have uh, explains. Um, public format like this, I'd rather not discuss those extenuating circumstances, uh, but I will say that uh, the contractor never relayed to me the information that he and Ben had talked about. He didn't have my permission to come up here and talk to Ben uh, to get things rolling. I told him I was going to do that. We, we delayed until spring once everything was squared around or better situation than we had at the time. Um, and that's when I found out and it was too late by then. 
Did the contractor bring you the certificate of variance? No. So you never received that from the contractor or from, and you wouldn't have mailed a copy to the applicant directly? No, I didn't. Okay. And talking with the contractor, he didn't take any of the paperwork with him. He just inquired about it. I never received any notice or any paperwork concerning that. Um, had I known, I worked there. Uh, you know, it would have been just a matter of, you know, taking the paperwork with me to work and having it processed and bringing it to Ben. So, do we still have the certificate of variance, or does the contractor have that? We have it. I. I, I produced the certificate, and he, and then he said, "Well, I, I, I don't want to do that. I will tell Mr. Toothaker to come down right away and do that." And then we, we have this filing area for where people are gonna, where people say they're gonna come back and do something. We just pop something up there, and it uh, just gathered dust up there for 90 days. And, and I, I assumed that Mr. Toothaker had, you know, come in and picked it up, and just the, the way the contractor was acting, that he was so desperate to get going on this project it just you know it didn't it didn't cross my mind that uh, it was that that oversight was occurring and and had the contractor not come in the day after the hearing what would your normal um, course of business would have, what would what would your what actions I, would you have taken I, I would have mailed the uh, certificate of variance to the tooth acres and, uh, and made them aware that their variance was approved and they have 90 days to register it. And that's typically what the procedure is. I mean, most people then do get a formal notice from you that their variance was approved and, it, and then they have 90 days to file with the registry. <coughs> It, yeah, it, that, that is that standard procedure. About half of the time, people are when they get their variance and they had been waiting for it, so they are antsy and so they are com coming in to pick it up by hand and speak with me personally. So, about half the time, it's just a, a personal conversation and a, and a handoff, and they get it right back. And uh, and and the other half of the time, it would get mailed with directions. And presumably, the half half the time I come into the office sometimes it's the homeowner sometimes it's the builder correct it just varies yeah and then when they come into the office you then don't send out a notice right it's a notarized certificate with a raised stamp on it so it there's not multiple copies. And again, just to reiterate this, so once the contractor came in in this particular case, you, you, kind of, you put it in kind of an inbox awaiting Mr. Toothaker to come in to pick it up. Correct. And, and Mr. Toothaker, can you just go into a little bit more detail what happened with your builder? Did you terminate your relationship with him? No, I did not. He, uh, he called and, and uh, actually he was at the meeting that night, and uh, the, the uh, appeals meeting. And we had talked on the way out the door, and I told him that we probably weren't going to start until April. And he left, I think, that following weekend to go home to um, start building through the winter for his mother, which is in Calus or Cal, I don't know how they pronounce it. So he knew. I didn't know, uh, you know, and I have talked to him since, and he did tell me that he failed to relay that information to me. And I didn't even know he was coming up here to, to do that.
Any other questions for Mr. Toothaker? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any public comment? Hearing no public comment, I'd like to open it up for board discussion. So, uh, do we have effectively two findings, separate findings of fact? One is, are we renewing the proceedings? Yeah. A. Yeah, let me, yes. <laughs> I, right now, and I guess I, we, I wasn't clear, or we weren't clear, <laughs> but right now we're discussing, and the argument that we heard from Mr. Toothaker and the discussion we heard from Ben was whether or not to renew the proceedings. And I, before we renew the proceedings, we need to decide whether or not to do so. If we decide to renew the proceedings, then we will get to the underlying substantive issues um, of the grant of, the, uh, of whether or not to grant the variance. So I think the discussion now should focus on the request to renew. 1953D, Decision Procedures, says that the board shall cause written notice of its decision to be provided to the applicant within seven days of the board's decision. Kind of the second to last full sentence in that subpart D. It sounds to me like in this case that didn't happen. And that that might be sufficient error in my mind that it is worth kind of renewing and re going over the same proceedings based on the same record that we have previously. Yeah, I mean, I can potentially even get there through 153, 1953E, where we have some, um, where a change has taken place in some essential aspect of the case sufficient to warrant consideration. I mean, so, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm satisfied between, I mean, personally, I'm satisfied between the language that Joanna just read and, and uh, Ben's explanation that, that this is something that I think we should consider re reviewing again. I would agree. I mean, I think certainly the language that Joanna cited, um, written notice of the decision was not provided to the applicant within seven days. Um, I, I think it's clear. Um, I, mean, I don't think we would be here had written notice been provided to the applicant. Would anybody like to make a motion? Uh, I'm on board. I, I, agree with, I agree with you as well. Um, I guess we would move to. Uh, Uh, I'll, I'll look for input on the wording of the motion, but I would guess we would move to uh, reconsider Mark Toothaker's uh, application for two Whelan Road. I'll second it. All in favor? So the motion is approved 6 nothing. Um, let me just, so this was a motion, the motion that was granted was to have renewed proceedings regarding the variance application that was unanimously approved on December 11th, 2013. So, 
having approved the motion to renew the proceedings, now we'll move on to the renewed proceedings. And um, I think we, before we um, invite Mr. Toothaker back up, the issue at the last meeting was whether or not we were going to have a full renewed proceedings um, and basically hear you know, argument starting from the very beginning with respect to the variance or whether or not uh, the members of the board who were on the board as of December and at the meeting in December could um, basically, I, I don't know if it's renew, Re reaffirm, reaffirm, regrant, renew the issuance of the variance. I don't think we really reached a conclusion or a decision as to what, how we would approach this procedurally now that we have agreed for a renewed, um, for a renewed hearing. So I think that's a, dis that's a discussion we have to have amongst the board, and it's just a board decision. Mike? Uh, my opinion is where it is, is renewed, I think we probably need to uh, reconsider, to consider it de novo, uh, because basically state law concludes that the prior decision was, was void or, or voided. Uh, all of that being said, uh, we have a very complete application here. I believe that notice went out to abutting landowners, so my suspicion is that that reconsideration, that renewal can be dispensed with hopefully relatively quickly so long as there isn't any new information that comes to light as part of the, the public process. And, and aren't the December 13th minutes still part of the record? Of course, there is. Yeah, of course. I think that that makes sense, and I agree with that. I think that there were also only four of us here. Four, were there in December? Were there, was it only four of us that are here, or were you here already? Yeah. And I think we need four votes to support a variance, so that would mean that it had to be. <laughs> it just creates kind of a higher standard if we do it the other way because it would mean that it would require a unanimous vote. Because there's only four of us, he would need four. Right, to, to, to renew. Yeah. So I think we should just hear it hear afresh, it. yeah. Okay. Um, I, think, I don't think we need to take a vote on that. I think the decision is to hear it fresh. Uh, Mr. Toothaker, I mean, we, we we have some new board members. Um, I mean, and they have their, they have the, your submission for this hearing. Um, and um, if, if you'd like to just kind of give us a, another summary of, of the variance that you're requesting and the reasons for the variance. Thank you. Um, my wife and I requested uh, that we were allowed to build a 12 by 27 foot sunroom on the back of the house facing two lights road. Um, about 10 years ago, we had the house picked up and moved, situated where it was, um, and have slowly been refurbishing it uh, as we could afford. Um, we're getting close to retirement now, and this is the last step in the process. And uh, I, I don't have the paperwork in front of me. I didn't bring it with me, but that's basically the request. And if, if you, we actually have an extra copy if you want to, just for your reference on that chair um, while we discuss this, if, if the board has any questions that might help you to refer to.
Can you remind me of what the setback issue was? Was it the um, the east, the kind of northeast corner of the sunroom, and how how much of that was in the setback? And isn't it also the case that it is far less encroachment than the historic location of the house? Yes, it is. That was discussed at the last meeting. Um, and we ended up, when we placed the house, when we picked it up and moved it, not using the amount that they allowed for us. So the actual amount that we need now is less than what's on the paper. And it is the east side. Am I remembering right that at the December meeting there was no opposition? We received no comments, kind of? Correct. Chair, I have a question. Do you know the neighbors that live across from you on Two Lights Road? There's two houses that are set back into the woods. Do you know who they are? Um, it would be uh, 2D. It lives diagonally across the street from us. David Schumann lives across the road from us. And how far would you say that those people live there from their house to where you wish to have the sunroom? How many feet do you think that would be? Oh, my. Over 200? Yeah, it's a long way. And one of the homes has many trees. It's, it's almost yes. natural state, if you will. Right. Okay. And the other property that's behind you, that's, I think, the Maxwell Farm, is that right? And there's a yes. pond? Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thank you. <clears throat> any board discussion? I'm sorry, any public comment 
on the substantive request for a variance. Hearing no public comment or discussion. It sounds like Mr. Toothaker met the criteria last time. I, I don't see any reason for that decision to change. And I guess it strikes me that uh, the board probably ought to approve the renewed application. Yeah, I mean, I, I was here when we approved it, and I certainly heard nothing that would change my mind. Uh, I agree. Yeah, I, I'm comfortable that he meets the, the, the standards in the, in the ordinance as well as, as explained in the application. I see no red flags here. Okay. Um, would anybody like to make a motion? Chair, I have a point of order. Yes. Is this for the purposes of going through the criteria or a motion to actually approve the application and then go through the criteria? The reason uh, that I, I just wanted to check the, the section in the ordinance, whether it says shall, the, the board shall, and that means that even though there's a, a willingness to expedite the process, I just sure. wanted to just double check that. Uh, and where are we look? We're looking at 19.54. Nineteen foot two five two B, I believe. On page. Sorry. Page forty Just speaking, speaking to the language that the zoning board shall consider if the variance would have the effect of blocking an established view, posing a fire, safety hazard, etc. Yes. Um, I mean, I guess the point is that we've all focused our attention on that section of the ordinance. We're content with it. We can proceed. I just want to make sure that we've actually considered that relevant portion. Yeah. I mean, I. We certainly considered it in December, and we incorporate by reference that that record. Absolutely, yeah, and the minutes from that record and the December record. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve, or any motion. I move that we approve the variance request for map U16 lot one at Two Wheeler Road owned by Mr. Mark and Ms. Wendy Toothaker. Second. All those in favor? Okay, the variance has been approved. Um, now in terms of finding a fact, uh, variance request is uh, findings of fact one variance request for map u16 lot one two wheeler road applicant Mark to mark toothacre two mark toothacre is the owner of record of map u16 lot one two wheeler road three two wheeler road is a non-conforming lot in the ra district the required setbacks are 30 feet from wheeler road 40 feet from two lights road and 20 feet on the remaining rear property line in order to construct an addition on the side rear of the house, the applicant is requesting a variance that allows a setback of 14 feet on the two lights road side of the property. Uh, the variance request was approved by the zoning board on December 11th, 2013, but the variance certificate was not recorded at the registry of deeds within 90 days. So the variance granted on December 11th, 2013 is no longer valid. Can we add to that, but we incorporate the record from those proceedings into this record? Yes, uh, we, number six, uh, the board incorporates the record of, the record from the December 11th, 2013 zoning board meeting um, into today's record. Um, this additional finding, 
I, mean, I think this relates to our previous, um, the previous motion, but the zoning board has considered the request as a renewed proceeding because the applicant has demonstrated that there was a mistake of law or misunderstanding of fact and injustice was done. Um, and conclusion, there is no substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance and a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty as defined by 30 AMRSA section 4353 4C. Any other findings of fact? Conclusions? Okay. All in favor of those? Six nothing. Thank you, Mr. Tudaker. Thank you all. And moving on to the new business before the board, uh, the next item is to hear the request of Ann Cranshaw, the owner of the property at Two Star Road, map U22, lot five, to reconstruct and expand a deck based on section 1943B3 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, ben, can you just give us a quick background, please? Yes, uh, Mrs. Cranshaw came in uh, six or eight weeks ago wanting to uh, reconstruct a small deck on the side of her house. She wanted to expand the deck, and, and based on the information I had in front of me, it looked like the deck was within the side setback, so we researched a little more. And it did turn out to be the case, so I informed her that she would need a zoning board approval to, in order to expand that. And, uh, yeah, that's why she's here. Okay. Yeah. All right, Ms. Crenshaw. <laughs> oh, and, and one other point. She's, she's not getting closer to the property line than existing structure. There he is. All right. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, all of you. Ann Crenshaw, my husband, Doug, is also here with me tonight. Um, and as Ben said, we would like to um, get permission to uh, reconstruct this deck and enlarge it at the same time. I think for me, a visual is always very helpful. If you go kind of towards the back, I think it's the maybe the third page from the back of the application where I included a couple of photos. Um, the top photo is of the original deck. Um, that is, it is 10 feet in front of the slider, four feet deep, um, with another half of that devoted to some pretty large steps. Um, not a very useful size, and it has rotted, so it's even less useful than it was. Um, the, what we'd like to do is to increase the size of that so it will make it uh, more practical, a more practical use, which would increase our enjoyment of the property and we believe it would also cre increase the value of the property. Um, my understanding is that the, um, from Ben is that we have a 10-foot setback and um, in our unconforming neighborhood on the side and that um, it, we have the corner, if you look at the, actually if you look at the second picture that um, the two, two trees right there in the foreground you can see in the back um, where the deck is located. Those two trees um, actually are not owned by us um, because that is, the, that is the corner of the garage where that little shrub is to the right of the trees and it's about, about four feet from the property line which must have been approved before we even purchased the house. Um, so the deck that, that we would like to build as a replacement um, does not even it, it, it stays within the distance that the original deck did. But you see we've kind of angled it. What page is that? That's right after the application. Well, it's just one page back, actually, two pages back, one page back from the photographs. We've angled it so that it will um, respect um, the existing, the setback from the existing deck. Um, made the steps smaller so we get more usable space. Um, I think that one of the important things to know is that um, even though we're very close on that side to the property line, 
um, there is a strip of land that's on the west side of the property that when we purchased the house we believed on it said on our deed was town prop town owned property at some point it was uh, transferred to our neighbors to the west Brentwood West Association and this strip is about 40 feet deep so from our west property line where we're talking about the deck it's 40 feet until you reach the rear property lines of our closest abutting neighbors in Brentwood and their houses are in bigger lots and sit either in the middle of the lot or a little closer to the road. Um, I have talked to um, many neighbors focusing on the ones to the west and right around us and I have not heard any objections um, from anyone, any concerns. Um, most importantly from those, those budding neighbors um, in, in Brentwood. Um, they have no problems at all. We can, we can barely see them this time of year with the leaves on those trees. Um, so that I think is an important thing to note. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Crenshaw? Will the um, end of the stairs essentially be at the corner of the white part? No, of the it, it doesn't come that far down. Let's see if you look on the um, the one before that. Mm -hmm. Do you see which, which is kind of like the the plot the plot plan from our mortgage? Mm -hmm. You see where it says the driveway, we actually, the line actually crosses the corner of our driveway even. But see where it says four feet there to the garage? Mm -hmm. And you can see that the deck doesn't even come close to that. Yeah. So it's more like kind of they where pretty much first. Actually, the steps are going to pretty much end right where, that, where the garage begins. Yeah, basically where that first drain pipe is, not the furthest, the closest one in, but the second one. Which one? Say it again, please. Sorry, on this second picture. Yes. On the close, the near corner of yes. the garage, you can see a downspout, and then you can kind of see another one further in that yes. looks like it's in between the house and the garage. That's yes. Kind of roughly there. That's right. It would be in, in in much closer to that one in the back. Yes. The steps might come a little bit into the garage area, but the deck would end before the, before the garage begins. And the white part is actually where the white siding is. That's actually the garage. I have a question as well. Um, on this page of the application that mm -hmm. where it talks about the paper street, um, where does the, it's called Dearborn Drive, is the paper street? Yes. And does it go straight to the back or does it loop to the right behind your property? Does the Dearborn, Dearborn Drive comes here yes. and then you, it takes a right turn on Star Road. The street doesn't actually go through. But yes, it does say that originally that was supposed to be an extension of Dearborn Drive. Yes. And it... I'm assuming it would have been that 40-foot strip right here along the edge of our west boundary is okay, where they so would have put a road. Let's assume that it just goes straight. So who, how far away is the home on the northern side of your lot? How far are they? Yes. Um, how far is there? I'd say their home is another, what would you say, Doug, another good 10 feet to the triplers' home at least? I would say. More, yeah. Well, it's. Well, ours is ours is a little closer. Ours is closer than that. But from they do have a fence there, and they um, you know one of those stockade fences. It's about like this, and they the way the land goes, there it it dips down a bit, so they're actually a little lower than we are. And because of the way that our house is set on the property and their house is in this area, um, I wish I had a pl the plot map. Could, 
The only way they would be able to see our deck is if they went into their far corner to the west and peeked over the fence. Could you estimate, so that we can use it for the record, how many feet their physical house is from, from that corner property. of your house? From the corner of our house. Um, I'd say 25 feet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Ms. Crenshaw? On the notice, there is a little plan that shows the location of the house in relation to the other houses, and it looks like you're probably being, um, it, it looks to me like it's probably more than 25 feet. It looks like there's a good gap there. A conservative estimate, I guess. Yes. yes. knowing that this little gap on this corner is eight feet and this little gap on this corner is four feet, it looks like Could we take board discretion to estimate how much that would be? Knowing that that's eight? So that the one to the north? That should be 20 feet anyways. So that, could that be an assumption? It looks to me like it could be 40 feet or more. I mean, it's, it's a ways. It's a distance. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I measured it at about 40. Okay. I have no more questions. Any other questions from the board? Ms. Crenshaw? Thank you. Thank you. Any public comment? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, no public comment. Um, board discussion? Excuse me, has, has there been any public comment that you've received by email then? Yeah, I, I received s several positive emails that supported the application, most, most of which I forwarded to the board. Thank you. In the packet? And that, that, uh, is it in the packet? I, it's not in the packet. Forwarded by email, but it has been printed out to add to the file. But it would be in the file. Yes, it would be part of the record. Thank you. All right, so the, the public comment that Ben has received via email is incorporated by reference into the file. Any board discussion? consider um, for the granting um, of the request. Does anybody have a motion? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the application uh, of reconstruction uh, of residence at uh, Two Star Road. Matthew 22, lot 5. Somebody second? I'll second. All right, Joanna. All those in favor? All right. Six, nothing. Um, findings of fact. This is a request of Ann Cranshaw to rebuild an enlarged deck attached to a non-conforming structure based on section 1943B3 of the zoning ordinance. Two. The subject property is Two Star Road, map U22, lot 5. Douglas and Ann Cranshaw are the owners of record for the subject property. Two, I'm oh, sorry, three. Two Star Road is a non-conforming lot in the RC zone. 
There is currently a non-conforming single fam family dwelling on the lot. Additional findings. One, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system and other on-site soils suitable for septic systems, the impact on views and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Three, the proposed, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirements to the greatest practical extent. Any other additional findings? All in favor of the findings of fact and additional findings of fact? Six nothing. Thank you. <laughs> the next item of new business is number two. <clears throat> to hear the request of Sylvain and 70 builders to enclose and expand an existing stairwell at 18 Smugglers Cove Road, map U10, lot 42, based on section 1944 of the zoning ordinance. The existing house location and expansion was approved by the Zoning Board on February 22nd, 2005. Um, ben, can you give us a quick background, please? Sure. Uh, the Zoning Board <laughs> approved uh, the, the rebuilding and expansion of this house in 2005. Several months ago, Mr. Sivany uh, called me, asked me to do a site visit at the house. There was extensive water damage at the house and uh, he was repairing the water damage and part of the water damage was caused by a stairwell. There's, there's a large roof deck on top of this house and there's a stairwell going up to the roof deck. They basically open, open to the sky and that was one of the sources of water damage. And, uh, in order to remedy that, he wanted, wants to enclose that stairwell up, up, to, the, up to the roof deck. It, uh, it, it's cantilevered, it, it's not entirely evident on, the, <coughs> on these pages where the addition is. Okay. Uh, it, it's there. Where, yeah. Are you looking at the back elevation drawing? Yeah, back elevation, it's uh, the tall windows where you see stairs through the windows, and, and right now there's no roof on that. The stairs are there, and, uh, and, and you walk up, but it's open air. So basically they want to they put that roof on in order to protect the stairs, and in order to, in, in, in order to make the stairs wide enough, they're cantilevering towards you, and relative to that picture, uh, two feet out from the structure. So there's a so there's a ten square foot footprint expansion due to that two foot cantilever. So right now there are stairs that go up from the ground floor or from the second floor? From the second floor. And below it is kind of living space that is that has stairs on top of it but is otherwise open to the elements uh, the, the stairs are open to the ele elements and there's a wall there so there's sort of a bathtub effect yeah. there, is, there is a wall beside the stairs and it's just it's, it's not a great design and so the, the rain gets in there and it has a hard time getting out and, and there is living space directly below the, the first floor living space is directly below those stairs that are open so, to the elements. So right now the, the stairs are enclosed on all sides, but there's not, there's, they're not covered? Correct. There's no roof? Okay. And you walk out from the interior portion of the house out onto a, like a landing area before you get to the stairs? Yes. Yeah, you walk from the second floor. In, in, there's a door that goes into the stairs. Which and then, and then right now, that's kind of outside? And that's outside. You walk through a door to the outside, and then you're walking up. open air upward. But enclosed on all sides? 
Yes. Okay. With a window on the side. So like an elevator shaft, but with no cap on top, just open. Yes. Is, is, is that depicted on this site plan from 2005, which is the last page in the, in the application package, or is this, was this what was proposed in 2005? Well, look, there, there's no detail on the site plan. I mean, I, it, his application shows where it's located. Okay, so that, so something has been drawn on here to this box that yeah might be hand drawn on here. Is, is that? Let's see. Yes, it's, it's, it's not labeled. Okay. But it is, so is that what we're talking about? It's that. Oh, I see. So it's, the, yeah. the the larger square is a first floor deck. And so gotcha. the, so, so just, that would be the two foot cantilever right there. By, by ten feet wide, and it's partially over that, the first floor deck. That, mm -hmm. That's that small bump out right there. And it's entirely within that 75 foot it, uh, setback from yes, the high the, tide. The, uh, the cantilevered portion is entirely within the 75 feet. Uh, not the whole, the, the whole thing isn't, the whole stairwell. It, probably two thirds of the stairwell Just is within 75 feet, and a third of it is outside mm -hmm. of 75 feet. Mm -hmm. Any further questions for Ben? Um. I guess I'm just not totally understanding. Sorry. Um, what, are to get the applicant up and yeah, yeah. I guess I'm just confused on where what the changes are to the setbacks. <laughs> yeah, why don't, sir? Yeah. My name is Josh Sivany, and um, so basically, I've, you know. I, I don't have a lot of information for you because these are basic sketches. We've spent uh, from January when I first brought Ben out to the house until about you know three or four weeks ago repairing uh, about two hundred thousand dollars worth of rot damage associated with the original design. Um, so the homeowner lives out of state. She comes up here periodically. She's very busy with work, um, and she came up. We we hired an architect, Kevin Brown, who's very good. But he, this was a preliminary sketch thing that he put together, and we had a meeting, and we, she was like, I, I like the design, this is great. So then I went to go see Ben, and he's like, well, the zoning board application has to be in in three hours, so here I am, and this is why, this is what I have for you, and not anything with any more detail. Um, but basically, what she's trying to do right now, the staircase, if we, if we were just trying to keep it in, in the uh, configuration that was there, what we had to work with, and just put a cap on it, it wouldn't give us an enclosed staircase that would be built to code. So that's kind of why we're infringing and uh, just building this small cantilever is to allow us to get, you know, a minimum of 36 inches in the stairway. Um, so basically, it, it's just a really bad design that, that failed miserably since the day the house was built. Um, you know, it, it, the whole thing structurally has been replaced on that side of the house. Uh, in regards to to the damage that occurred from this, um, so she, you know it, it's it's basically trying to work within this. We know that we were you know, there wasn't a lot of room for expansion, um, so this was uh, the one uh, way that Kevin could come up with something that was aesthetically pleasing, that also uh, allowed it everything to to meet current building codes, um, and. 
further this damage from not happening again, obviously, because this, she spent a great deal of money on the home and had three home inspections done, you know, and everything. There was damage there that had been covered up, and so there, it's, it really was quite a nightmare for her um, to, to discover it. She's handled it very well, but it's, you know, so we're just trying to come up with a solution where she can get to her rooftop deck to enjoy it without her spending a ton, I mean, she spent a sort of serious amount of money to, uh, to make these repairs. So, you know, that's one thing that we kept in mind uh, going forward with this and why we've only gone this far with the drawings as well at this point is just because, you know, she is on a budget as well and uh, getting this stuff done and approved. Um, so that way she can move on and move to Maine. And I, I think I know where Joanna was going with, with your question before. You're wondering why this is here yeah. in front of you. Yeah. And, and, and the reasoning behind that is because a, a specific design was approved by the zoning board in 2005. It took views into consideration and, and many things into consideration. So my interpretation is that if anybody wants to further expand, that would, that would be up to the zoning board because they'd be expanding beyond what they originally approved. There's, if, if there wasn't a zoning board approval on this house and they came in with this project, it would, it would be a code officer approval just verifying the, the shoreland expansion rules. And what was the underlying approval? Was it an approval of a variance in the Shoreland Overlay District, or was it just kind of a general approval? It was uh, re reconstruction, relocation in, in the Shoreland Overlay. It, it wasn't a variance. Okay. They didn't get close to the ocean. I have okay. all the paperwork, the full approval here. Uh, they, uh, John Mitchell was the consultant that did the original approval, and he crunched all the numbers for the 30% expansion and there and there was a little bit of area and volume left of the 30%. So the, the original approval is very, very detailed. And basically for the complete rebuilding of the house. Yes. And so we're essentially talking about an increase of about 27 feet, if I'm at the existing floor area that's uh, current first proposed. Going from no. 2050, 2060 versus 2088. Yes. Just trying to understand the design. So 27. 27 feet. Uh, Yes, that's that's what is indicated. Okay, so the cantilever is it's going a little higher. It looks like is that I assume you know you put the cap on. Is yeah. that it, is that not there now? That's correct. That the, the windows. The, this the, is not the windows and the roof are not there. It's it's. Basically, a, a, a railing, a rail height going across. Well, no, it's it's a little it's a little taller than that. How, how tall is that section right now? The section where where that wall is is about the where the railings are actually being lowered on the on the rooftop deck portion. This we're about four feet below the this new portion is about four feet below that cupola type structure that's on the roof. And but what is the overall height increase? And right, right in that portion of the stairs. Uh, it's two and a half feet. Oh, I'm sorry. Two and a half feet from the existing uh, roof line to the right. So, if you're looking at the picture with the can cantilevered section, that section over it is two and a half feet. Oh. This, is, this is the one that says front elevation. Back elevation. The back elevation and front elevation. That's the same peak. And looking at the back elevation now, 
is there a window here now? Is there, no. There, right now there's nothing there. It's wide open with the two by fours going across it because the whole thing was completely rotten. But what was here before? A wall. A, a, a Solid wall. wall. Solid wall. Yeah. Up to the, this peak? Uh, basically, uh, it was about, above that roof line, it was 47 inches. Above the, the rubber roof line where... Above the roof line the, with, with the, the, the railing? Is. Yeah. Okay. So just a, a wall straight up? Yes. Okay. Uh, um, Above which roof line? Above the flat roof line. So we're looking at the front elevation here. Back. I was looking at the back. I'm looking at the back. The back elevation. I guess I just want to be okay. So we're looking at yeah, the back that's elevation. The... I think there's some 47 inches in there. Okay. Oh. Okay. So the existing roof line is then basically at the foot of the columns that are depicted on the back elevation drawing? Yes. Okay. And there was basically just a privacy wall there? Yep. And that was a, pri I'm sorry. And, yeah, and prior there was, there was a post about every eight inches and at every single one of those posts they didn't flash it so when we opened the roof up the, in, the, in this house, the whole thing was completely rotten. I mean, it was, it was not a pretty set, it was not a pretty set at all. So this whole wall was actually compromised. The whole thing has structurally been rebuilt. You know, we've pulled the windows out, put them back in, uh, in a few different areas because the headers were completely gone. So. She's just trying to, you know, we're putting this back together for her so that way she can move on, basically. She bought the house last year and she has, you know, she's not going to be living there before November, probably, at this point. So from a, a visual impact standpoint, perhaps safe to say it's going to look a little bit better than it did with just a plain wall? Yes. Yeah, it, it, visually it should really... The, this wall was kind of, I mean, for all the windows, and, and you turn around and the ocean's behind you, so it's beautiful, but it's looking at it before, it was kind of just bland. So this kind of, it, it's not going to aesthetically hurt the house at all. And that's what, you know, Kevin was trying to accomplish is to do this. We also wanted to make the house look a little bit nicer for her at the same time, instead of spending all that money and your house looks exactly to a T the way it did prior. You know, there was a couple bands that they put in the house that they didn't flash properly and those all rotted and, I mean, it, it, it's, we had to reside the entire home in nine years, so, you know. And, and the sitting room roof, of course, is still, is, was there before, it's obviously it, there now. Yep, everything, the only thing that we're adding is just, and the whole reason for the bump out portion is to get a staircase that's the code that, you know, is, is enclosed and safe. So instead of walking out on the second story and walking up a set of stairs on a landing, up another set of stairs and onto the roof, you're gonna, that's gonna be completely enclosed and you're gonna walk out a door and onto a roof. And when you say bump out, it's bumping out in their back? Yeah, pumping out towards, towards, the, uh, towards the ocean side of the home. So where that, that new um, window is, yeah. it's, it's coming out, right. just, just that part? Yep, just that part of it. Has there, uh, been, has there been any comment from Butters or anything like that? I, I have not had comments from Butters. I've, I've had inquiries, but no comments. The, where this is and where it's located, it really should play no effect on anybody's views or anything. Um, the house across the street is, you know, the houses around it are, are substantially shorter. Um, except for the house directly across the street, but it's not going to really change the, it's not towards the ocean. Where this is, is back off the ocean. Is, is there, uh, the, the neighbor across the street, I'm looking at the, the uh, neighborhood map, if you will. Um, uh, is that there? Yeah, I guess that, that's a, that, that's a, the, their front view is looking out over, your your client. Their what? Their front their, their front door, if you will, is looking out over your clients. Yep. Come in. Sure. The uh, the the neighbors directly across the street did come in and review the application. And 
did and did not make any formal comments, positive or negative. Any other questions for Mr. Seventy? This has only come up because of the early application with Mr. Toothaker. Has the applicant, uh, as the builder, has the owner of the property communicated to the town that they have a relationship with the applicant? No. Okay. I only raise this, I'm not doubting the applicant. I just want to make sure that we will be receiving something so that um, the, when we instruct when we make a decision and we tell the applicant that they have seven days after the hearing that this is the answer, that that person then does something. Um, we heard earlier that the builder was the applicant way back when didn't communicate something to the, to the, to the owner. So I wanted to avoid a potential problem that um, there's no wiggle room for our authority and also the applicant. So on the applicant application itself, maybe this is a change in the future, that some, uh, a, an assertion that this person represents the owner of the land or something like that. So right now we, we have in front of us an application signed by the builder. It, it's more of a, arguably a technicality, but I perceive it as a, as a continuity issue. Yeah, on our, on our building permit application, it, what you're saying is a good idea. On our building permit application, underneath the signature line, it, 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 it states that by signing here, I am attesting that I am authorized to act on behalf of this property. Uh, and that wouldn't be a bad idea to have on this application. We could go a step further and have, uh, and have them submit a form that, uh, that, that uh, the owner of the property formally signs a form authorizing this person to represent them, that would be a, a step further. But in this case, if this is approved, the owner of the property will be mailed uh, a, a notice of zoning board approval. And this isn't a variance such that any recording requirements are triggered, right? Correct. Any other questions for Mr. Seventy? Thank you. Thank you. Any public comment? Yes, sir. Can you please uh, step up to the podium? Thank you. Uh, not really a comment, but Mike explained it, and I just was here just to find out whether the cantilever was going over the street side or the water side or, or where. So you've explained it's on the water side. So fine with us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and we haven't received any other email or comments from the public. No. Are we, I know we're, we have board discussions? Yeah. Uh, okay, we've moved on to that. We've now moved on to board discussions. Okay. Let's discuss. So are we, if we are to approve this, are we approving it based upon these drawings? Or is there going to be a final drawing of the redone of the, of the cantilever? Well, they, they are they are going to have architectural drawings done, and you know how the board wants to do this approval. If they're not completely comfortable with the drawings, if you could uh, you could do a verbal description of what's approved. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just at some point I want. <laughs> I want you to see some architectural drawings. Yeah, there, there's, there will be architectural drawings before the building permits issue. John, is the issue, the, the 
the height, the width. For me, it's it, it, uh, any time I see something going up on Waterview, I always get a little, you know, I just ask a couple of questions, you know. A butters, it's nice that we have a, just a gent here if yes. lives in the neighborhood. He doesn't seem to be having too much agita over it, but you know, we, we've certainly had seen enough applications of various types before here where views have been impacted. I do recall last fall, I think there was an application where this house had big structures on either side and they wanted to fill the middle a bit in. And there was a huge uproar as to whether that was appropriate. Uh, I take your point. Um, we struggled as to what it is that we have to approve here, and the shape, the physical shape of this roof line. Right, which is why I asked whether we're going to approve this based upon what I like to call the artist's rendering. You know, it's very, you know, very nice pictures. I just, I yeah. just no, but it doesn't. It doesn't have any measurements. Exactly. On it. He did. Uh, he did say that the new roof line will go two and a half feet higher than the adjacent roof line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think this just gets back to what you said earlier that you know we either need to put some guidelines on, you know, we need to put some parameters around what the what the final plan is gonna look like, even though I kind of sitting here scratching my head saying is that really our our job. But you know, I think so long so long as we understand what it is we're approving and we can put some parameters around that so that when you know you have the architect plans then you can verify it and I you know I mean again I'm not trying to prejudge the application but well, you know I, I'm I'm okay with that but I just um, you know normally we do have the architectural plans when we're, when, when we're looking at stuff like this mm -hmm. yeah I, mean, I think that point is well taken I think when, when I hear that we were kind of rushing to get something on paper so we could come before the board and we don't have architectural plans. I, I think generally it seems okay what they are looking to do, but I do have some concerns over what the final plans will be um, and making sure that if, if we get to the point where we're approving this, that we're approving, that we know what we're approving and we're approving something specific enough that Ben can make sure that the plans are in compliance with what we've approved. So, so the question is, do we have enough to provide some guidance for approval, or, or would we rather just see the final architect drawings as part of a you know, final package for approval? I don't know how to answer that question, so let me ask this question, hopefully in reply. Let's assume that this house is brand new. And it has to be built. And we're, most all of us are content with almost everything. But this, this portion above the stairs is at issue. If it was currently submitted, would it be within the ordinance? This, this thing here. In other words, if this was just a, um, a green field lot and they wanted to submit this, this plan, and is there anything that catches our attention? And, and if they, what is that issue? And then the second, or should we not go down that road because we're only looking at a particular spot, which is that the new uh, cantilevered roof portion? I mean, that would seem to be going back to the original approval back in 2005. Yes. I and mean, we're, we're, we'd be applying the same factors to our approval. The size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, and most of these don't necessarily apply because now the house has already been built and this is just basically enclosing the stairwell with a roof that's going up. Which is lower than the sitting room roof. Yeah, yeah. But, but when it was before 
the board in 2005, they had measurements of a house that was being built. We don't have measurements for this. We don't have a specific plan other than the picture and the general description. Is that the difference? I guess the, the point is that if the built, as built house without the um, cantilevered roof, it does not require a variance. And if you add the new roof and it doesn't require a variance, then it, it should be green lighted. It shouldn't want. It should, it should be approved. Because we have enough, we're working backwards essentially, is that the outside skin of the house built didn't require a variance or any change. I'm not sure why. Um, well, it's in the shoreline. I mean, they're reconstructing this house. Then that's, the I think that's the focus then. So what aspect of that and whether that would uh, be caught, whether the new roof line would be caught by the overlay that you just talked about? But it is not because the numbers that they've submitted are still within the 30 percent, which and, would have and been And presumably if, they, if the final numbers were outside of the 30 percent, it would not be approved by then. Well, this predates construction. Yeah. I guess I am struggling also with, personally, with not having a kind of image of what it looks like now or what it looked like previously and then under the 2005 approval and then kind of here's what it's going to look like. That is a little bit of a struggle for me without having kind of, you know, I'm imagining that it's kind of, this area that's new, but I don't know exactly how much of that is new, but I personally would be comfortable with Ben confirming that the final plans are consistent with what we've heard here tonight and kind of going forward from there, assuming that Ben could confirm that and to the extent they're not, then saying that it would have to come back again, I guess. Well, the plans wouldn't be approved. They could then wouldn't come that, up with new plans, or if they required a variance, then they would have to request a variance from the board. I mean, I think that's what we always do, isn't it, in a way? I mean, we say, yes, we're giving you this approval, and then Ben issues a building permit, essentially saying, yes, this is consistent with the approval, or it isn't. Yes, except usually we have a more little bit more information. Plans. Yeah, I mean, in, in essence, we're going to say something like, okay, the roof line can't be more than two and a half feet, you know, above the existing roof line, or the cantilever can't be more than two and a half feet above the existing roof line, and you can't, and the overall total square footage can't be above what you said in the application. There, and then the volume, obviously, by code, has to be, or by ordinance, has to be below 30%. That's, I mean, that's in essence what you're going to put in the finding of fact, right? Or in the, I mean, motion would or, be, or I mean, that, motion. Would, that would be right up front, right? Uh, I just have a clarification, hopefully a clarifying point. Has Ben made a decision on something that the builders have done or is about to do? And if Ben hasn't made a decision, then I don't think we have jurisdiction. So if they're seeking a variance, then we would have jurisdiction. So uh, what doorway have we gone through to be talking about this application? So the, I don't believe we're talking about a variance. So that we're not talking, well, that's not our before us. Has Ben made a decision on something? I mean, I think as Ben just explained at the outset, it's before us because the original construction, the original plans in 2005 required board approval because it was the reconstruction of a home in the shoreland zone. And okay. Have you written a letter and, and that's a part of the file? No, I haven't. That's, so, that's how I wrote it up in the findings, as 1943B4. So I'm thinking the power is still within the code enforcement officer to determine whether whatever is going to be built is within the purview of the original um, 
decision back in 2005, subject to um, what's going to be submitted for the detailed drawings for the building application. But isn't the problem that they approved very specific plans in 2005 that didn't include the enclosure of the stairwell? So it, it, it didn't approve what is being requested now. I take that point. I also take, uh, I rebut saying that um, some things you don't need approval for. The question is the material. And it, it sounds like it's within, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't appear to look like it needs a variance. I take John's point that it's more of aesthetic and you want to make sure that people are, Joanna is shaking her head here. I'm shaking my head and I'm sorry. I think that we're, if you look at pages 37 and 38 of the ordinance, we have jurisdiction in multiple areas. We have jurisdiction when on appeal of a zoning, of a code enforcement officer decision, that's what you were talking about. We have jurisdiction over variances. That's also what you were talking about. But we also have jurisdiction where there is relocation, reconstruction, uh, or replacement of non-conforming buildings and structures, as is set forth on pages 37 and 38 of the ordinance. And that's why this is here, is because the zoning board had to hear and approve the reconstruction, relocation, or replacement of a non-conforming structure in the shoreland zone. So that was kind of the doorway which it came into us by, not just an appeal of the code enforcement officer's decision or variance. Am I getting that right? Yes. And now a portion of that structure is being, again, reconstructed, reconstructed. and expanded. This is an application for reconstruction. 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 19, is that 1943B? That's where I was. Or, yeah. Is it B3? So the, that okay. correction on the, the findings of fact would change? B, I mean, B4, is, there is no B4, correct? It's B3. Okay. Okay. Take your point. Okay. So are, are you? I'm satisfied. All right. Uh, any further discussion? Somebody like to make a motion? Should we try to work together to come up with a motion that somebody might make? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, So the motion would be to to reconstruct and enclose an existing. Well, the motion would be to grant a request, right? Motion to grant a request of. Let me just get this in. Sylvain and Seventy. Builders representing Candace Warren to rebuild and enclose an existing stairwell on a non conforming structure in the Shoreland Overlay District. Based on section 1943B3. No? Yeah, B3. 
that alone doesn't have any. It's uh, it's nineteen four four. The four in the four four. four. Yeah. There. Because we're there. Nineteen four four. Yes. Nineteen four four B three. I got the three in the gotcha. four. Okay. Um, Do we want to add some meat to that? Yes. Well, before we do, if you look down in our draft, there's actually some pretty good language. Yeah. Like, for example, in the F the findings of facts um, five in particular. Do we want to incorporate? that language in five into the motion? I don't know. I can go either way on that, as long as it's in the requirements. It's in the requirements. Yeah, I, I think we can put all the finding of facts. OK. I mean, anything we wanted to add? I mean, yeah. It's up to you. I, I, no, no, I'm comfortable with that. Um, so I mean, the motion that we have right now is to grant a request of um, Sylvain and 70 builders <coughs> representing Candace Warren to rebuild and enclose an existing stairwell on a non-conforming structure in the Shoreland Overlay District based on section 1944E3 of the zoning ordinance. Would somebody like to make that motion? I'll make that motion. OK. Anyway. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> I'll second it. All in favor? All right. The motion has been approved. Um, I'll go down these findings back, and we can then decide if we need to add anything. Um, this is a request of Sylvain and 70 builders representing Candace Warren to rebuild and enclose an existing stairwell on a non-conforming structure in the Shoreland Overlay District based on section 1944B3 of the zoning ordinance. The subject property is 18 Smugglers Cove Road, map U10, lot 42. Candace Warren is the owner of record for the subject property. Three, 18 Smugglers Cove Road is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. It is also in the Shoreland Overlay District. There is, a, there is currently a non-conforming single family dwelling on the lot. Four, on February 22nd, 2005, the Zoning Board of Appeals approved the demolition, rebuild, and expansion of this house. Can we just add that the record from that uh, approval is incorporated herein, is incorporated by reference herein? Uh, additional findings of fact. One, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system and other on-site soils suitable for septic systems, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. To accomplish the reconstruction. Mm -hmm. Uh, two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirements to the greatest practical extent. Four, the lot coverage in the Shoreland Overlay District is currently nonconforming and will not become more nonconforming. And five, the cumulative expansion of the portions of the structure within 75 feet of the normal high water line shall be certified by an architect not to exceed the 30% limitation. Can we amend the end of that to say limitations for floor area and volume? That sounds That's what's in the application, and those are the only two that are changing. OK. So five will now read the cumulative expansion of the portions of the structure within 75 feet of the normal high water line shall be certified by an architect not to exceed the 30% limitations for floor area and volume. And do we, you may have covered it, but do we want to add to that the proposed floor area will not exceed 2,087.8 square feet? Isn't that the 30%? Well, it's not because that's only 22.8%. Uh, okay. That's so what's in the application. So we'll add that. 
what was the, the proposed floor area shall not. Proposed, the proposed floor area within the 75 foot uh, uh, shoreland overlay setback, I believe. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, 78 foot of the high water line uh, will not exceed 2,087.8 square feet. 2,087.8 square feet. So that would be numbers, additional findings of fact number six, the proposed floor area within the 75, within 75 feet of the high water line will not exceed 2,087.8 square feet. Well, the volume is actually a bigger concern for me because that goes more to kind of what's upward as opposed to the floor area. So does it make sense to amend what was five to say that the architect will certify that the, the numbers that were given in the application for existing floor area and existing volume will be certified to post construction you, do Again, you know what i mean i mean didn't we had the lot that addresses yeah. our concern over height right right but we already had volume we have them at 30 percent okay but what's in the application is 22.8 percent and 29.3 percent Okay. So that would hold them to the application as opposed to the maximum of 30%. Okay. So the cumulative expansion of the portions of the structure within 75 feet of the normal high water line shall be certified by an architect not to exceed. The limitations presented in the July 8, 2014 application. That sounds fine to me. Okay. So and I think that addresses the height issue as well, which was my bigger yeah. concern. So five will be the cumulative expansion of the portions of the structure within 75 feet of the normal high water line shall be certified by an architect not to exceed the limitations presented in the July 8th, 2014 application. And say, can we say limitations for floor area and volume as presented? The limitations for floor area and volume as presented as presented in the July 8th 2014 application. 2014. And are we then st striking six? Yes. Okay. So let me just read. Redundant. Let me read five again. The cumulative expansion of the portions of the structure within 75 feet of the normal high water line shall be certified by an architect not to exceed the limitations for floor area and volume as presented in the July 8th, 2014 application. Any other findings? All in favor? Six nothing. Thank you, Mr. Seveny. Uh, I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, all in favor? We're adjourned.